Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Jen and I am just your friendly neighborhood not lady. And today I'm going to teach you how to make this adorable festive polar bear bracelet from start to finish. And that includes the loop, the triangle ends of the bracelet, the pattern itself, and of course tying off the ends and the back. And I know this video is a lot longer than the videos I normally post, but I really wanted to make a step-by-step -step tutorial on this super cute bracelet. And alpha patterns can be really difficult when you're first starting out, so I'm hoping that by breaking it down step-by-step, -step, I'm able to help at least one person and to show you all that it's actually really simple to do. So if you've never made an alpha bracelet before and you've always wanted to give it a try, then maybe this is the perfect tutorial for you. Now, having said that, there are some parts of the video that I have sped up just to kind of cut everything down a little bit, but I do explain every single step and I tried my best not to miss anything important. And I also just want to point out that this bracelet took me about three hours to make from start to finish. So feel free to pause this video as you create with me or to kind of come back to this video as you need to. I've also put timestamps in this video so you can jump to different sections of the bracelet. So if you already know how to make this loop and you're really just interested in learning more about the color switching, then you can just hop on over to that section. And be sure to like and subscribe if you find this video helpful. And without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. So for this bracelet, I referenced pattern number 62119 on bracelet book, which was uploaded by KM Morel. I will leave the link for this pattern in the description below. Here's everything you're gonna need to make this bracelet. I've gone ahead and cut seven strands of DMC embroidery floss in white at about 100 centimeters. I've cut one more strand at about 120 centimeters, and we'll be using this piece to create our loop at the top. And then to create the actual bracelet itself, create our pattern, we have this blue for our background color, the red for the bear's hat, the gray for inside the bear's ears, the white for the bear fur itself, and the black just for the bear facial features. And I will list all the color codes for these colors in the description below. Now you won't need too much floss to create the bear itself, but I would just go ahead and grab two skeins of the white and two skeins of the blue, which is going to be our background color, just so we don't run out of floss, because that's always really annoying. And next we're going to attach our base strings to the edge of our working station. For me, that's always the edge of my desk, but I know a lot of people like to use a clipboard or even just work on a flat surface. For me, I just like working on the edge of a desk or a table. I just find it a little bit easier. So I'm actually going to take the seven strands that I cut at 100 centimeters and pair it up with the 120 centimeter long strand. Just gonna put all of these ends together. And I'm actually going to be taping these strings to the edge of my desk. And I'm gonna be taping it kind of at the halfway point between these strings. So you're just gonna measure out about 48 centimeters from all of these ends here. And that's where you're going to tape your base strings down. All right, so this is about the 48 centimeter mark here. Okay, and then we're just going to tape this down like so. And then I'm just gonna take another piece of tape and just kind of reinforce these strings because it's always really annoying when you're working on a bracelet and the strings pull out from underneath the tape. So just make sure that tape is sticking to each strand so that doesn't happen. So now with the base strings that are sitting in front of you, that are sitting in your lap, one of these base strings should be about 20 centimeters longer than the rest. And this is actually going to be your working string to create our loop. So to create the loop, we're going to be making a series of forward backward knots. So to create a forward backward knot, I'm going to create sort of like this four shape with my working string over top of all of my base strings and pull it through like so. Make that nice and taut up here. And we're gonna finish this knot by going backwards. And to do that, we're going to create sort of this backward four shape and pull our working string through here and pull it taut like so. 
So then you're just going to keep repeating that process just keep going with your forward backward knots and they're just going to make a little encasing around all of your bass strings okay so i have made 17 forward backward knots so now i'm going to go ahead and remove my bracelet from the workstation just by removing this tape carefully so now i can see all my forward backward knots and if i kind of wrap this around my finger a little bit I can kind of get that circular shape that I want for my loop. And this is what we're going to be attaching to our workstation. So I'm just gonna take some more tape and taping it down just like this. All right, and now I'm going to create the triangle end to my alpha bracelet. So I'm actually going to take my blue embroidery floss. This is going to be my background color. And I've gone ahead and wrapped an entire skein of this around a bobbin, and that'll just make this a lot easier to work with. So I'm gonna take a little bit of slack here, and I'm gonna tape it down like so. I'm going to do a full forward knot over all of these bass strings. So do that forward motion we were doing at the beginning there. And forward. And now I'm actually going to split the bass strings in half again. And I'm going to do a full backward knot over this half and then a full backward knot over this half. So backward and backward. And backwards and backwards. So now I'm just gonna add in a strand from each of my little bundles here into the middle. And now for this row, I'm gonna be doing four forward knots. I'm gonna be doing one over this bundle. So one forward knot, a forward knot over this one, a forward knot over this one, and a forward knot over this bundle. Okay, and then for the next row, we're gonna do the same thing as last time. We're gonna add in one strand from each of our little bundles into the middle. In this row, we're going to be doing six backward knots, one over this bundle on the far right, one over this one strand that we just added in, a backward knot over the strand we added in from the last row, a backward knot on the next string, a backward knot on the strand we added in from the left bundle of bass strings, and then a backward knot over the bundle on the far left. And I just use my thumb to kind of push the knots up a little bit, just so they're all sitting a little bit more evenly. And I'm just gonna keep repeating this process. I'm gonna keep adding in one strand from the left bundle, one strand from the bundle on the right. And now we're going to be doing eight forward knots, one over this bundle on the far left, one on the strand we just added in, forward knots over each of these single strands that we've already added in. forward knot on the strand we are adding in from the bundle on the right, and then a forward knot over the far bundle on the right. 
And again, just using my thumb to push these knots up, kind of manipulate them so they sit a little bit straighter because by the time we actually get to all of our single bass strings, you want this to be nice and straight. So again, I'm just gonna add in a single strand from our bundle into the middle and same on this side. Okay, and now I'll be doing 10 backward knots. So you can see we're kind of getting this gradual effect. We're getting that triangle shape at the beginning of our bracelet. So I'll do a backward knot. And then a backward knot on the strand we just added in. And then backward knots on all the single strands we've already added in. And then a backward knot on the strand we just added in. And then a backward knot on the bundle on the far left. And then again, just trying to push these knots up so we get a nice straight line before we continue on with our next row. And again, just adding in one strand from the left side and another strand from the right side. And then we'll be going across with our forward knots again, one on the bundle on the far left, one on the strand we just added in from that bundle, forward knots going across all of these single strands that we've already added in, Okay, a forward knot on the strand we're adding in from the right side. And a forward knot over the bundle on the far right. And then again, just pushing on our knots, making sure our row is relatively straight. And again, adding in our strands into the middle from the left and right bundles of base strings. And again, going across with our backward knots over the right bundle. A backward knot over the strand we just added in from that bundle. Backward knots going across all of the single strands we've already added in. backward knot going on the strand that we just added in from the left bundle and then a backward knot over the left bundle and then again just pushing on our knots making sure everything is nice and straight and this time I'm going to be adding in the last strands from each bundle so this will actually be the first row where we're using all of our bass strings. So we're gonna do a forward knot on all of the single strings this time. And then our last forward knot on our last bass string. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to lift off all of this tape and I'm going to reposition my bracelet a little bit here. I'm actually just going to move it up a little bit just so the edge of the bracelet is just hanging off the side of the table here. Just take another small piece and attach it right on this triangle here. So now I'm gonna start creating some negative space around the bear. So to do that, I'm just gonna go back and forth using backward and forward knots along all of these single bass strings. 
So for this row, I'll be doing 16 backward knots and the next row I'll be doing 16 forward knots. And since we're also done creating our triangle now, we've used up all of our base strings, we can see how wide our bracelet is going to be. So our bracelet isn't going to get any wider than this. I'm just finishing up this row with a backward knot and still pushing up with my thumbs making sure that everything's staying pretty straight and then like I said I'm just gonna go back across all of these strings again but this time doing forward knots kind of to get that back and forth weaving motion almost and this is one of those times I have just sped up the video you can just go ahead you're gonna do one row of forward knots and the next row you're gonna do all backward knots. You're just gonna go back and forth and I've done this for about 25 rows after finishing my triangle and as you can see I'll kind of just lift up the bracelet, reposition it up on my desk and then tape it back down again. Okay so I've just finished making my 25 alternating rows with my backward and forward knots and now I'm ready to start making my actual pattern. So first things first, I'm going to turn the pattern sideways so that it's sitting the way I want it to sit on my bracelet. I'm also just going to reposition my bracelet a little bit just so that it's up near the edge of the table. I just find this helps keep your bracelet nice and straight and we can grab another small piece of tape and just secure it. All right, so to make this pattern, we're just gonna go through this row by row. So for the first row, I can see I'm not putting in any new colors. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this whole row using forward knots. All right, so now I've completed the first row of the pattern itself. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the second one. And as you may have already guessed, we're gonna be creating the second row by using backward knots. And as you can see, I will be adding in some white strings as well. But I have six blue knots to create before I start on the white. So I'll go ahead and do six backward knots. and six. So now I'm gonna be adding in my first new color. So I'm gonna be coming in with the white, so I'm gonna grab my white bobbin, take a little bit of slack, and I'm actually going to take a little bit of tape, and I'm just gonna tape it up to the right here and put it behind these base strings, and I'm just gonna let this blue kind of sit on my lap like this. So then I'm gonna come over with the white. I'm gonna grab the next base string that I need to create my knot on. And I'm just gonna continue doing my backward knots. So I need to create two white knots. So there's one, two. Okay, and now we're gonna be switching over to the blue again. So I'm actually just going to take my white, kind of tuck it behind my base strings, put my bobbin up out of the way. I kind of just set it up on the table. And then I'm going to grab my blue again and kind of come in behind these white knots here, grab the next base string I need to work on, and I'm going to do another backward knot, just like so. Okay, and then I need to switch over to the white again and create three more white knots. So again, I'm just gonna come behind these base strings with the blue. And then I'm just gonna make sure that my white 
is kind of falling behind this blue string just so they're not getting all tangled or anything like that behind the bracelet. I'm gonna grab my next bass string and then I can go ahead and create three more backward knots along the next three bass strings. So there's one, two, and three. Okay, and then I'm gonna finish off this row with four blue knots. So again, just taking my white, tucking it behind my bass strings over the blue, and then I'm just grabbing my blue, making sure it's coming behind the white, grabbing my next bass string, and finishing off the row with my backward knots. Now this is just how I do my color switches. There are other ways to do it, but this is just how I always do it. And four. Okay, and then we finished our second row for this pattern. Okay, so let's move on to the third. So I'm gonna start with three blue knots this time and of course I'm switching over to my forward knot so I'm gonna do three forward knots with the blue over the first three bass strings in this row and then I'm gonna tuck my blue behind these white bass strings and I'm gonna put it over to the right up on my table and then I'm gonna grab my white and this time I'm going to be doing five white knots. So I'll just grab my next bass string and continue with my forward knots for this row using the white. Okay, now that I've created the fifth white knot, I'm going to tuck this behind the bass strings, set it up over the blue, and then I'm just gonna pull the blue back down and sit it in my lap. And that's because I'm gonna be adding in another color. So now I'm gonna be creating two gray knots. So I'm gonna take my gray here, take a little bit of slack, get a little piece of tape, and I'm just going to tape the slack up on the table. And I'm gonna put this behind my bass strings, but it's still going to be in front of the blue. And I'm gonna come over, grab my next bass string, and I'm going to create two gray forward knots. So one and two. Okay, so now I'm going to take my gray, kind of tuck it behind my bass strings, but put it over top of the white and swap it out. I'm gonna grab the white and I need to create one more white knot in this row. So I'll come over with the white, do a forward knot onto the next bass string. And you can also kind of pull on the last color you use just to tighten that last knot, just to make everything sit nicely. And then I'm going to take my white Kind of put it behind these bass strings over top of the gray, tuck it out of the way. And now I'm actually going to grab my gray and I'm going to set it on my lap because now I'm going to swap it out with the blue. So I'll just grab the blue. The gray can just sit there. It's chilling. We'll grab our blue and we can finish off the row using all blue forward knots on the rest of our bass strings. Okay, and that is the third row of our pattern done. Okay, and now I can go ahead and start on the fourth row. And I'm gonna create this row using backward knots. So I'll go ahead and start with my blue again. So I'll do five backward knots with the blue. I'll just kind of wrap up the slack a little bit. And then I'm going to tuck my blue behind these bass strings, set it up on the table, grab my white that I have sitting on this side, and I'm gonna come over and do 
another backward knot with the white. And then I'm gonna tuck my white behind my bass strings, put it over top of the blue, swap them out. And then I'm gonna put the blue on my lap and I'm actually going to grab this gray. Now, as you can see, they're kind of crossing and we don't want that. So we just wanna make sure that the gray is sitting on the side that it naturally sits on behind the bracelet. And that way it's just not gonna get all tangled and crisscrossed on the back of your bracelet. So now I'm gonna come over and do one backward knot with the gray. And I'm going to tuck it behind my bass strings, put it over top of the white and swap it out with the white, grab that. And then I'm going to create seven backward knots using the white. Okay, seven, and then I'm going to tuck the white behind my bass strings, put it over top of the gray, swap it out with the gray, and I'm just gonna set this down on my lap. And then I'm going to grab my blue again, and this can just kind of go over top of the gray like this to come over and do the rest of the row doing backward knots. And that completes our fourth row. Okay, moving on to row five, we're just gonna start it off using one blue forward knot. Then we're going to tuck our blue behind our bass strings, put it up on the table, grab our white that's sitting on the other side, and I'm just gonna create white forward knots all the way up to this gray knot that we did on the last row. And then I'm going to tuck my white behind the bass strings, put it over top of the blue, I'm gonna grab the blue, and then I'm going to finish off this row using forward knots, all blue knots. Okay, and that finishes up row number five. Row number six, we're gonna create five backward knots using the blue. Okay, and then I'm just going to tuck the blue behind these base strings, tuck it up out of the way. Now I'm actually going to grab my white that's sitting up on the table. I'm just going to put it on my lap for now because we're actually going to be adding in the red. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of slack here. I'm gonna put it just behind these bass strings and I'm actually going to lift this piece of tape that I used to secure some slack before. Just kind of stick it underneath. Okay, I'm gonna come over. I'm gonna create one red backward knot. I'm going to tuck the red behind my bass strings, put it over top of the blue, grab the blue, and I'm actually just going to set it up on the table on the right here, because I'm not going to need it until I'm like way over on the other side of the bracelet. So I'm just gonna stick it over there for now. So then I'm going to grab my white string, making sure it's not getting tangled with with any of my other colors. And I'm going to create three backward knots. And then I'm gonna tuck the white behind the bass strings, 
put it over top of the red, and then I'll grab the red and just put it on my lap with where it sits naturally. And then I'll be adding in my last color, which is the black embroidery floss. So I'll just take a little bit of slack there and then making sure it's going over top of this blue as well. I'm going to lift up this piece of tape, stick it under here, and then I'm just gonna come over with the black and do a backward knot on the next base string. Okay, so now we have the first little eyeball on our bear. So I'm gonna take the black, I'm gonna tuck it behind my base strings, put it over top of the white. I'm gonna grab the white, make sure this is all neat and tidy. And then I'm going to create five backward knots using the white. Okay, and then I'm going to tuck the white string just behind this last base string, put it over top of the black. I'll grab the black and just set it on my lap with my three other colors. And then I'm gonna grab the blue that I still have sitting on the table over here. And I'm gonna bring it over to this last base string, finish off this row with a backward knot. And there's that row done. And then moving on to row number seven, we're gonna be creating this row using forward knots. So I'll take my blue, make one forward knot, tuck it behind these base strings, and just set it up on the table. Then I'm going to grab my white, and I'm going to create three forward knots using the white on the next three base strings. Okay, and then I'm going to tuck the white behind these base strings, put it over top of the blue. I'm gonna grab the blue and just like the last row, I'm going to put it up on the table to the left just so it stays out of the way because we won't need it until we're back on the other side of the bracelet. We're gonna be using a few more colors first. So then I'll grab the black, grab the next base string and I'm going to create one forward knot using the black. And then I'm gonna tuck the black behind these base strings, put it over top of the white, swap it out with the white, come back over. And then I'm going to create five forward knots using the white on the next five base strings. And again, I'm just using my thumb to kind of push all the knots up, making sure the rows stay nice and straight. Then I'm gonna take my white, put it behind my base strings, put it over top of the black, grab the black, and I'm just going to set it down on my lap, making sure that it's not getting tangled with the red. And then I'm going to grab my red, again, making sure the black is sitting kind of back over where the nose should be making sure I'm not, you know, I'm not crossing it over like this. We wanna make sure it's out of the way. And I'm gonna grab my next base string. I'm going to create two forward knots using the red on the next two base strings. Okay, and then I'm going to tuck the red behind these base strings, put it over the white, grab the white, and I'll just set the white down on my lap for now. I'm gonna come back over and grab the blue from the other side. I'm going to create one blue forward knot. And I'm going to tuck it behind my base strings, put it over top of the red, pull the red back down, put it back down on my lap. And then we're gonna grab the white, come back over. We're gonna make one forward knot using the white on the next base string. Then I'm going to tuck the white behind 
base strings, put it over the blue, grab my blue, and then I'm going to finish off this row using forward knots on the last two base strings. And that finishes up the seventh row. Moving on to the eighth row, we're gonna be creating this using backward knots. I'm gonna start using one backward knot with the blue, and then tucking the blue under my bass strings, tucking it up out of the way. I'm gonna grab my white. Going to create two backward knots using the white. I'm gonna tuck the white behind my bass strings, put it over the blue, grab my blue, and then I'm gonna put it up onto the right side, get it out of the way, just like I've done for the other rows. Then I'm going to grab my red, and I'm going to create three backward knots using the red. I'm gonna tuck the red behind these bass strings, put it over the white, grab the white, and I'm going to create five backward knots using the white. And then we'll just Tuck the white behind the bass strings, put it over the red, grab the red, and I'm going to set it on my lap, making sure it's not crossing over with the black. Grab the next bass string, and then I'm going to create two backward knots using the black. I'm gonna tuck the black behind the bass strings, Put it over the white, grab the white string. I'm gonna create two backward knots using the white. And then I'm gonna tuck the white behind the bass string, put it over top of the black, and I'll just set the black down on my lap. Grab the blue that's sitting on the right over here. And I'm just gonna finish off this row with one backward knot using the blue. And you just wanna make sure you don't pull too tightly when you're kind of pulling the blue from side to side like this. If you pull too tightly, it's gonna make your bracelet fold and bend and you just want it to sit nice and flat. So making sure it's not too tight and making sure it's sitting nicely with all the other knots will help keep your bracelet nice and straight. And that completes row number eight. And we are also officially halfway done our bracelet now. All right, so I'm gonna start row number nine using a forward knot with one blue knot. I'm gonna tuck the blue behind these base strings and tuck it up onto the table. I'm gonna grab my white, bring it back down. I'm gonna create three forward knots using the white. Okay, I'm gonna tuck the white behind my base strings, put it up over the blue, grab the blue, just kind of tuck it over to the side, on the other side. Then I'll grab my black, making sure it's not getting tangled with my red. I'm going to create one forward black knot. And then just pulling it under my base strings, putting it up over the white, grabbing the white. And then I'm going to make five forward knots using the white. And then I'm gonna tuck the white behind these base strings, put it up over the black. I'll grab the black string and I'll put it back down, making sure it's on the left side of the right bobbin, making sure they're not getting tangled. Then I'll grab my red, 
I'm gonna create two forward knots using the red on the next two bass strings. I'll tuck the red behind the bass strings, put it up over the white, grab the white, and I'll just set the white on my lap for now. I'm gonna grab the blue, kind of bring it behind these bass strings, and I'm gonna create one forward knot using the blue on the next bass string. Again, not pulling it too tight, making sure that our bracelet is sitting nice and straight, nice and flat. I'm gonna tuck the blue behind these bass strings, put it up over the red, grab the red, put that back down on our lap. When I grab the white, I wanna make sure it's not getting all crossed over with the red. So it's making sure it's going over top of that. And I'm gonna create one forward knot on the next bass string. I'm gonna put the white behind the bass strings, put it up over the blue, and then I'm going to finish off this row using two blue forward knots. And that completes our ninth row. And then moving on to the 10th row, we're gonna go ahead and create that using backward knots. So I'm gonna make five backward knots using the blue on the next five bass strings. I'm gonna tuck the blue behind these bass strings. I'm gonna grab the red. And this is the last red knot we're going to be making. So I'm gonna make one red backward knot. Then I'm gonna go ahead, stick the red underneath these bass strings, put it over top of the blue, grab the blue, and I'm just gonna swap it out with the white I have sitting over here. So bring the white down. And then before I start making more of my white backward knots, I can actually go ahead and cut this red. Now that we are done with it. And then I'm going to create three backward knots using the white. And I'll stick the white behind the base strings. And this is also the last black knot I'm gonna be creating in this pattern. So I'll just make sure that it's not getting tangled with the red. I'll just stick that over there. The red can kind of just fall behind the bracelet now. The black, I'll make my one backward knot. I'll take the black, stick it behind these base strings, grab the white, and then I'm gonna create five backward knots using the white on the next five bass strings. Okay, I'm gonna tuck the white behind this bass string, put it up over the black, which I can actually cut now. So I'll just cut that. And you just wanna make sure you're leaving about two inches of slack when you do cut your colors out of your pattern. Then I'm gonna grab the blue, come back over, and finish off this row using a backward knot. Okay, and that completes row number 10. Moving on to row number 11, we're gonna start using a forward knot with the blue on the first bass string. We're gonna tuck the blue behind the bass strings, put it up out of the way. So we're gonna do nine forward knots using the white on the next nine bass strings. And then I'm gonna take the white, stick it behind these bass strings. And I'm going to finish off this row using forward knots in all blue. Okay, 
Okay, and that completes row number 11. <laughs> and moving on to row number 12, we're going to create this row using backward knots. So I'm gonna start this row by creating five backward blue knots. Okay, and then I'm gonna tuck the blue behind the base strings, tuck it up out of the way. I'm gonna grab my white. I'm going to create one backward knot using the white. I'm gonna just bring this over here, tuck it behind the base strings, put it up over the blue, grab the blue. I'm just gonna stick it up out of the way again. And then I'm going to grab the gray, which is kind of been sitting back here for a while. Make sure it's not getting tangled with the black or red strings that I have cut back here. I'm just gonna grab that, grab the next base string. I'm going to create one backward knot. Okay, tuck the gray behind the base strings, put it up over the white. Grab the white. Okay, I'm going to make seven backward knots using the white. Okay, I'm gonna tuck the white behind these base strings, put it up over the gray. Pull the gray back down, just set it on my lap here. I'm gonna pull the blue back over. Finish off this row with two blue backward knots. And that completes row number 12. Moving on to row 13, we're gonna start this row off with three forward blue knots. I'm gonna put the blue behind these base strings, put it up on the table, grab the white. I'm going to create five forward knots using the white. And I was just using some leftover white for the actual bear pattern. So I'm getting close to the end of it, but that's okay, because we're getting close to the end of the pattern. Hey, okay, I'll just tuck the white behind these base strings, put it up over the blue, grab the blue, bring it back down, put it up to the left, get it out of the way. And we'll grab the gray. This is the last row we're gonna be using the gray. I'm gonna create two gray forward knots. I'm gonna tuck the gray behind the base strings, tuck it up here, and I'll grab my white, bring it back down. Okay, I'm gonna create one white forward knot. Okay, let's tuck the white behind the base strings, put it up over the gray, bring the gray back down, leave two inches of slack or so, maybe three and just cut that off, because now we're done with the gray. I'm gonna grab my blue, come back over and finish off the row with five forward knots. Okay, and that completes row 13. Moving on to row 14, we're gonna create this using backward knots. We're gonna create six backward knots using the blue on the next six bass strings. And six. Okay, I'm gonna tuck the blue behind the bass strings, grab the white. I'm gonna make two backward white knots on the next two bass strings. Okay, I'm gonna tuck the white behind the bass strings, put it up over the blue, bring the blue back down. I'm gonna make one blue backward knot. Put the blue behind the bass strings, put it up over the white, grab the white string, and I'm gonna make three backward knots using the white. 
And this will be the last row that we make our white knots in. And will also be the last row that we're actually making our polar bear in. And then I'm gonna tuck the white behind the bass strings, put it up over the blue, grab the blue, and I'm gonna finish off this row with four blue backward knots. Okay, so now I can go ahead, leave a couple inches of slack here, but I'm gonna cut off the white string. And now I'm back to just using the blue string, just like I was at the beginning. I'm gonna finish off the last row of our pattern using all forward knots with just the blue all the way to the other side of the bracelet. And there we go, we have officially finished making the polar bear pattern. We've made the part that's going to impress your friends, the part that makes this whole bracelet slash tutorial worthwhile. We'll deal with all of these little pieces of slack once we finished making the whole bracelet. But now that we're done the actual pattern, we're just gonna make sure everything's sitting nice and straight. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just keep doing my backward forward knot motion. I'm gonna do that for another 25 rows just to even out the bracelet on the other side. So again, just doing backward and forward rows all the way down for another 25 rows. So I still have about 10 more rows to go before I can start doing the bottom of my bracelet, um, but I'm starting to run out of this blue thread. So what I'm going to do is just swap it out with some more. So I thought I would just show you guys how I do that. So when I'm adding in more of the same color, I always try and start not on the edge. I always try and put it somewhere in the middle just so I don't interrupt the flow of this edge here. So I just started this row here with two forward knots. Then I'm just going to tuck this blue thread behind the base strings. I'm gonna grab my new skein of blue. I'm gonna put this behind the base strings. And I'm gonna take a small piece of tape and I'm just going to tape it off to the side. And then I can just continue with my forward knots and I have a whole new skein of blue to work with. So it is the same as just adding in any new color. I just wanted to show you all how I did that. And then once we finish the bracelet and we go to tie off all of our other colors, we can also tie off this one. Okay, so now I'm just going to continue doing my forward rows and backward rows. And like I said, I still have another 10 rows or so to go. So I'm going to hop off camera again and we will jump back in once I'm all caught up. All right, so this is where I'm at so far. I've done my loop, I've done my triangle end, I've done 25 rows of just backward knots and forward knots, I've done my pattern itself, and then I've done another 25 rows of forward knots and backward knots. So now I'm just gonna walk through how I do the triangle end at the end, how we're gonna tie this all off, and how we're gonna tie off the back and clean this up a little bit. So let me just reattach this to my workstation. All right, so we're gonna start our triangle end just like we finished the last one, and that's actually just by doing forward knots all the way across. So forward knots on each bass string. So once you're finished all your forward knots there, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of recreate those bundles we had when we were creating our triangle at the beginning of our pattern, at the beginning of our bracelet. So I'm just gonna grab one strand from the middle, add it over here to this strand, and I'm gonna add this strand from the left 
over here. So now I'm kind of starting to create these groups again. So now I'm gonna do backward knots all the way across, except the first knot is gonna be over these first two bass strings. Then I'll do backward knots over all of these bass strings individually, excluding the last two. And I'm gonna be doing the last backward knot over these two bass strings together on the far left. Just like that. And I'm just gonna do the same thing as I did for the last row. I'm just gonna add one strand from the middle, add it to the group over here. So now we have three strands in this group and one strand from the middle, add it to the right. So we have three strands in the other group as well. And I'm gonna go across with forward knots over these three bass strings. Do forward knots over these strings individually. And then a forward knot over these three. Okay, and then the same thing for the next row. I'm just gonna add a strand from the middle into the group on the left and a strand from the middle into the group on the right. And then I'm gonna go ahead with my backward knot over this group with the new strand added into it. Do my backward knots over these individual bass strings. Okay, and then a forward knot over this group with the new strand added into it. And then same thing, we're just gonna add a bass string from the middle into the group on the far left, and then a bass string from the middle add to the far right. And we're gonna do forward knots over this group with the new string added into it. Forward knots over these bass strings individually. And we can really start to see that kind of tapering effect now at the end of our bracelet. And then a forward knot over the group on the far right with the new bass string added into it. Okay, and again, we're just gonna add those bass strings from the middle into our groups on the far left and the far right of our bracelet. We're gonna go back in with backward knots this time over all of these bass strings. Backward knot over all of these bass strings individually. And then a backward knot over this group on the far left. And then again, adding in a bass string from the middle to the far left and a bass string from the middle to the far right. I'm gonna go ahead with some forward knots over this group with the new bass string added in. Forward knot over this bass string. forward knot and forward knot over the last group and lastly we're gonna add the final strands from the middle into our two groups go ahead with some backward knots just to keep that back and forth motion going and a backward knot over this side. Just 
just like that. And then we can finish it off with a forward knot over all of the strings together just to really bring that down into one point. And there we go. So now we are done actually knotting our bracelet. The hard part is now over. So now we can go ahead, we'll leave a bit of slack here. I'm just going to cut that off. So now you wanna make sure that your base strings are in half again. You want eight on this side, eight on this side, and you're just gonna go ahead and braid each side. So to braid, we're just gonna take eight of these strands, put them into three sections, and then just overlap them like so. Just always overlapping the middle section. And you just wanna keep that nice and tight. And I just wanna point out that from this point to the top of the bracelet is just shy of five and a half inches. So you just wanna make your tassels accordingly to whatever size is going to fit you or whoever you're going to give this bracelet to. So if you have a small wrist, you might wanna keep these a bit shorter, but if you have a bit of a bigger wrist, then you might wanna make these ties a little bit longer. So for me personally, I think I'm going to make these ties about six inches long, just because the bracelet itself is a little small. So I wanna make sure that I have enough to wrap around my whole wrist. So now at the bottom of my braid, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie a knot. And this is why I like to cut so much excess on my base strings, and so it's easier to tie at the bottom. So I'll just go like that and just kind of push it up to where I want it to sit. Just like so. And then I can go ahead and cut the tassel at the end. Okay, and now I'll just go ahead and braid off the other side as well. Okay, so now my ties are all braided, they're knotted, they're all cut off. I have my bracelet all made. Now all that's left is to flip it over. We're gonna clean up the back and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So I always start just by tying off these pieces of slack together. So for example, these two pieces that are right side by side, I'll just kind of give them a little double knot. Just like that, and after it's tied off, I can cut it just like so. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. Tie these two together. Just any ones that are close together. It doesn't really matter which ones they are. We'll tie the reds off together. I do still have the blue slack at the beginning and the end of my bracelet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut these a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to take some of this No Sew Fabric Glue. I got this from Walmart a long time ago, as you can see. I've been using it strictly for bracelets, so it's lasting me a while. But I'm just gonna take an old paintbrush, kind of just dab it into the glue a little bit. And then I'm going to take this blue slack here and then just glue it down. Just kind of push it with the glue until it's sitting where I want it to sit, just like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just grab a little bit more glue, and we're just gonna glue that down to where we want it to go. And then I'll just take a little bit more glue, and I'll just do the same thing on all of the pieces that I just tied off and cut, just to make sure they don't come undone. Make sure everything stays looking nice and pretty on the back of our bracelet. Let's make sure everything sits nice and flat. And there we go. 
Okay, so now that I'm done gluing all that, I'm just going to set this aside for 12 to 24 hours just to make sure it dries completely. I'll just set it to the side somewhere safe where my cats can't get it. And now that the back of my bracelet has completely finished drying, my bracelet is officially done. So now to put it on, I'm just gonna put one of these strands through the loop that I made, just like so. And then I can put it on my wrist. And I'll just go ahead and tie it off. And there we go, we have our super cute polar bear bracelet. So again, I know this video was really, really long, but even if a one person found it helpful, then it will have been worth it. Let me know if you decided to make this bracelet for yourself. And if you did, feel free to tag me in photos on Instagram. You can find all of my socials in the description below. And if you are still here with me watching this video, then you are the real MVP and your opinion is the only one that matters. Please let me know what you thought of this video in the comments down below and let me know any other tutorials you would like me to film in the future. I hope you drink lots of water today. I hope you have your favorite snack and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!